Income tax 2022-2023. Student loan interest deduction. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Most of this information can be found at the Form 1040 Instructions Tax Year 2022 Instructions for Schedule 1 Additional Income and Adjustments to Income the adjustments to income section, which you can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at our income tax formula, we're focused once again on the adjustments to income. Remember in the first half of the formula is in essence an income statement where we have income minus the equivalent of the expenses, those being deductions, gets us to the equivalent of net income, that being taxable income. Our goal, it's flipped on its head. We want taxable income as low as possible as opposed to normally when we want net income as high as possible. We call this second item adjustments to income. You might hear them call above the line deductions or schedule one deductions. You could think of them as deductions or contra income accounts because they're going to be decreasing the income money, 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 money. line to get down to that key number, the AGI, the adjusted gross income, the number often used to calculate phase outs on things like deductions and uh, credits as income levels rise. Also note that we don't have that same kind of hurdle with the adjustments to income as we do with the itemized deductions that we would have to clear before they benefit us. So if we qualify for an adjustment to income and an above the line deduction, that could be a good thing that we can take even if we don't clear the hurdle of the standard deduction. Down here, we're on line number 10, adjustments to income from Schedule 1. Here is the Schedule 1. We're looking at the student loan interest deduction. Now, this one obviously is a fairly straightforward type of deduction. If you have student loans that are qualified student loans, you should re receive documentation uh, related to the interest portion of the payments that you may be able to deduct, and it might be dependent upon whether you can deduct it or not. The amount of uh, your AGI. You could have like income uh, limitations as your income level goes up. It's also an interesting topic with regards to personal debt, personal finance, and government policy. Questions you often get asked when doing tax preparation. So I'll just give a few thoughts on them. Note that when people get into debt issues, one of the strategies is often to try to consolidate the debt, trying to take the debt out of the areas where you have the high interest payments often credit cards, and put them in an area where hopefully you have lower interest payments, possibly using something as collateral to support the loan, like a home or a car or something like that. And that may be able to facilitate, say, lower interest payments, lower rent on the purchasing power of the money in essence, and also give you some standardization over time instead of having these fluctuation of interest payments that you might have with say a credit card, which can give you a little bit more peace of mind to think about what your strategy is going forward. Now note when you think about student loans with regards to that policy, it gets a little bit confusing because one, the interest payments are usually fairly reasonable. They're not bouncing all over the place like with a credit card, for example. But even if you can get a lower interest payment, if you were able to pay off the student debt and consolidate the debt somewhere else, some would argue that that wouldn't be a good strategy because one, you get the deduction and the deduction here could be a, a beneficial item, but then you've got to figure in and calculate how much actual benefit you're getting from the deduction. Because of course, this deduction is just a reduction of net income. You're not actually getting a dollar for dollar interest back of the 2000. It depends on your actual uh, tax rate. So that's one uh, issue. 
The other thing that often comes up is people say, well, the government's at some point in time is just going to wipe out all student debt, which they are threatening to do. Right? So they could possibly actually do that, which is an interesting scenario just from a policy perspective, because you could see you could see people's behavior when when you say you're going to take out debt and then we're just going to we're going to say that we're not going to uh, we're going to wipe out the debt at some future time. Obviously, that will incentivize people to take on take on more debt with credit card debt. Credit card debt. They don't expect to actually pay off. So that's an interesting, so that might actually be true. I wouldn't really depend on that to, to happen. And I, and, I, and, and I think it's actually bad incentive wise for the, for the health, long-term health of the economy because, because it obviously will incentivize behavior of people taking on more debt than they otherwise would or could handle with the expectation that they're just not gonna end, end up having to, to to pay it off and that's not a good strategy to to be learning usually although again it could pay off given given uh given the current situation so that's just the dynamics of that which are kind of interesting so in any case line 21 student loan interest deduction you can take this deduction only if all of the following apply you paid interest in 2022 on a qualified student loan defined later so typically you'll get documentation if it's a qualified student loan but standard student loans you got a loan a general loan for um higher education would be the general idea or the general case your filing status is any status except married filing separately once again if you're married you and you decide that you want to file separately you can't go back to head of household or single you got to file married filing separately and the irs is quite skeptical of people doing that to try to take advantage of certain areas on the tax code such as deducting interest for example because if you file married filing separately possibly you would be able to take the deduction because of the income threshold isn't there so anything that has a phase out of income thresholds uh, the irs is going to be skeptical of people separating their married returns to file separate to take advantage of you know income thresholds possibly so so that's another example that married modified adjusted gross income uh, agi is less than eighty-five thousand if single head of household or qualified surviving spouse or one hundred and seventy-five thousand if married filing jointly use lines two through four of the worksheet in these instructions to figure your modified agi so that kind of makes sense to me obviously that you know that you would think that it would phase <clears throat> the the amount of uh, deduction you would get would phase out because your loan paid off, obviously, if you're making over 85,000, if you went to school and you took a loan to get the education, and then you're, now you're making 85,000 or 175, which is another interesting topic because when they talk about wiping out the student loans, sometimes they talk about these, these people, income thresholds that are quite high, you know? It's like, well, if someone's making like $400,000, why do we need to wipe out their loan <laughs> or something, you know? But so it's a kind of an interesting dy dynamic on the loans with regards to the policy. And again, I don't, I don't know the answers what you should do for you personally, given the structure of the policy. Should you hang on to the loans, even though it would be more beneficial to consolidate them because you think that the government's going to wipe out the loans in the future? Should you, should you actually structure your thought process on, on your political, your political leanings based on the fact that you want to get your student loan paid off, <laughs> you know, I, you know, that's, I don't know. So you or your spouse if filing jointly aren't claimed as a dependent on someone else's, such as your parents, 2022 return. So don't include any amount paid from a distribution of earnings made from a qualified tuition program. That's a QTP after 2018 to the extent the earnings are treated as tax free because they were used to pay student loan interest. So use the worksheet and these instructions to figure your student loan deduction. So you can check out the worksheet if you so choose. Obviously, tax software will be helpful in practice to be determining these uh, uh, the amount of the deduction on the interest. The thing that you want to understand in your mind is basically, yeah, I should get documentation on the student loan interest. Typically, it should be per fairly easy to do the data input on. And if your income is above a certain threshold, then you might have a phase out in terms of the student loan interest that you're going to be able to deduct. It is an above the line deduction, not an itemized deduction. So if you're not phasing out 
you should get a benefit from it because you don't have to clear the standard deduction in order to get it. So exception, use publication 970 instead of the worksheet in these instructions to figure your student loan interest deduction. If you file form 2555 or 4563 or you exclude income from sources uh, within Puerto Rico. Qualified student loan. A qualified student loan is any loan you took out to pay the qualified higher education expenses for any of the following individuals who were eligible students. Number one, yourself or your spouse. That one seems fairly obvious. So you took out a loan for yourself or your spouse because you're, you're, you're one entity for taxes and, uh, and now you're paying back the interest on it so the, the interest portion might be deductible. Remember, remember not the whole payment. Not the whole payment is deductible, just the interest portion, the, the part they charged for, for the use of the money, the purchasing power, the renting of the money. Two, any person who was your dependent when the loan was taken out. Three, any person uh, you could have claimed as a dependent for the year the loan was taken out, except that A, the person filed a joint return, B, the person had gross income that was equal uh, to or more than the exemption amount for that year or $4,400 for 2022 or uh, you or your spouse filing jointly could claim as a dependent on someone else's return. So generally the concept would be if it's someone on your return, you, your spouse, your dependent, then you would think and it's the education expenses were re related to them then you would think you'd get the deduction and then you've got number three which is this weird area where they might not be claimed as a dependent but you've got but they're still going to qualify because of either a b or c however a loan isn't a qualified student loan if a any of the proceeds were used for other purposes or b the loan was from either a related person or a person who borrowed the proceeds under a qualified employer plan or a contract purchased under such a plan for detail see publication 970. So I think this is mostly the case for many, many people in the college town, right? They actually didn't spend the money on the education. They spent it on like beer and or whatever. But, you know, so so in that case, then, you know, I, and again, obviously, if if there's an incentive that there's student loan money out there and the idea would be that you, they might just wipe out the student loan money going forward, that will probably lead to people trying to scam student loan money and spend it maybe even not on, st <laughs> on student loans, right? So, so again, I, I think the incentive structures, we got to kind of be careful on them, although I can understand uh, wanting the student loans to be to be wiped out and whatnot, which might, in any case, qualified higher education expenses. Qualified higher education expenses generally include tuition fees, room and board, and related expenses such as books and supplies. So that's what you gotta spend the money on uh, in order for the loan to be a legit loan. Now note that when we talk about these education things, we've got the HOPE credit, we've got this qualified uh, tuition that we talked about. There's there's different areas we talked about like the the, well, in any case, there's different areas where you have this this idea of what you need to spend the money on to qualify for education type of things. And sometimes they're different if you're talking about like the student interest versus like like a grant or something. Do I have to include that in, in income uh, versus like the hope and lifetime credits, which are credits for higher education? So you can't you sometimes you get those things kind of muddied up in your mind. You say, ah. You know, all the, all those rules are the same. If it's qualified higher education expenses, room and board and, and the books and whatnot and the tuition, well, sometimes those things are, aren't all the same, right? So you got to make sure that you're applying the money, what you're spending the money on to the proper area for the student education uh, component that you're looking at, whether that be the student loan here or whether that be the HOPE lifetime credit and whatnot. So the expenses must be for education in a degree, certificate, or similar program at an eligible educational institution. An eligible educational institution includes most colleges, universities, and certain vocational schools for detail see publication 970.